Hi you guys. Um, today we're going to start our sculpture unit. Uh, specifically we are going to be focusing on sculpting a human face, a human head and neck and shoulders in sort of a portrait bust. This is just the head portion because uh, mine broke but <laughs> I'll be making another one. So I want to show you the process and also talk a little bit about um, the history of why people like to do sculptures of, of um, human faces. So here's the process. You will start out with some foil and you're going to create an armature. That will be the inside. You can sort of see inside. This is a little bit convenient that this broke because you can see the inside. There's some foil in there. What's going to make it strong, lightweight, and um, easier to work with, a lot easier to work with, is, is f first to build this foil armature. So your uh, finished sculpture will probably need to be, the head will be a little smaller than your fist. So we're not working really huge. So because your clay, which you will roll out, you'll probably do about 12 ounces of clay. I have a scale, but I mean you don't really have to measure it. You'll get a sense for that. You'll roll out the clay. It starts out in these um, kind of blocks that are a little bit brittle and, and they seem very tough and hard to work with at first, but as your hands warm them up, they will soften. It's probably going to take an entire class period for you to get your clay from this to this. Um, so you see this is like a quarter inch thick. That's going to be about the thickness. You don't want, really want it any thinner than this for your sculpture, but you'll be coating your armature with this sort of a skin of clay. Um, and that will also allow us to bake it. So this is a great intro material to use for sculpting because um, if you enjoy it, you might enjoy ceramic clay, actual literal clay from the ground, which is a lot trickier to work with and you can do more things with it um, and do it has more uses. But so this is a fun kind of intro to clay. So Paul, this is um, like a polymer clay, so it's kind of plastic based and we can just bake it in an oven and do all kinds of things with it. So you'll use a rolling pin to roll this out, but the first thing is to form this into a head and neck, more or less. So you just don't compress it too much. If you compress it too much, then you're going to get something that you just can't reform. So try to lightly compress it. You don't maybe start with not a whole lot at a time. Mine seems really big. Maybe it's a little bit too big, but I'll work large for the sake of being able to see what I'm doing. But we don't want to create um, just like a, a round ball shape with a with a, a neck at the bottom. You really want to think about the, the shape of the head, like a human head in profile. Here's a good example. I need to show you just my awesome skeleton, or it's not a skeleton, my skull in the art room to really look at the structure because you're almost going to want to think of your armature of foil as the skull inside the, the the clay skin. So you can see there's a circle up here but then there is sort of this wedge shape of the jaw that really sticks out. You almost want to over exaggerate it at first because it's really easy to just forget about it and do this to create kind of like a ball and no jaw. So. I might even set this down next to it to look at the profile view and try to start forming the jaw. If you're having trouble and your yours is not really working, you can always maybe try to add it on afterwards, but that's a little hard because when you're working with foil, it's hard to add pieces. It just wants to fall apart if you do that. So I'm going to try to get this wedge shape and it's going to look really distorted at first. From the front, make sure that it's, yeah, it's almost like a, a pear or a, yeah, maybe a pear shape tilted with this neck coming down. So pointy here, wide at the top, and from the front, there's, it's a bit of a flat plane right here, and, and then it. It, on the sides, it kind of recedes away, if that makes sense. It's hard to really get a sense for it until you're actually doing it. But 
Then I want this to flare out so I can have um, some shoulders here. Again, I don't want to over compress it, so just be careful as you work. You can always add more, but it's very hard to take it away once it's like densely crumpled. So I'm thinking about how I can make this into shoulders. You can add more to your shoulders, like um, I have some examples here. Just bear with me for a minute. Portrait busts are very, um, in history, there's a, just, if you go to an art museum or even just like a museum in D.C., you've probably seen these before. These are famous, people are often, have been like commemorated by these portrait busts uh, where it's just the head and shoulders. So not an entire figure, although there are a lot of those too, but noteworthy figures, like you will see all of the, for the presidents, early presidents will have these in museums and places around in DC. So, but th this really goes back all the way to ancient Rome where um, the sculptors were interested in, in doing these uh, portraits of people in a very lifelike manner, not idealizing them, but trying to get s capture some unique personality. Um, they were working in marble, I believe. Yep, these are marble, life-size. But then again, in the Renaissance, Michelangelo, as you can see, Statue of David, I will strategically not put it any farther down. So you, you've probably seen this picture before. Very famous statue. There's David, his face idealized. Um, we don't know what David really looked like, but he represents this kingly ideal, this youthful, noble person. So Michelangelo, being a Renaissance sculptor, sculptor was interested in um, kind of calling people to a high and noble ideal. So he had this huge statue, so you're meant to go and be inspired by this noble figure and just in awe um, and really thinking about how uh, humans are created in, in the image of God. So the the beauty that shines through this larger-than-life figure is meant to inspire the viewers. So anyway, you can think about if you want to create an idealized figure in your portrait, or if you want to do a real person, or maybe something more um, playful. Uh, so today, sculptors often work in Hollywood, uh, so you may have seen this movie, Paranorman. It's a stop-motion movie. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. I just got this out of a magazine, I think Wired or something. Um, you can see there's a... It's a totally stop-motion. So this little character, Norman, he, each one of the scenes has his, his hair and his eyeballs, but the faces, there's 8,000 faces. So this article is called called The Boy with 8,000 Faces. So these were probably made on a computer and printed out and um, every single expression. So again, these are like very playful and stylized in, you know, the Hollywood kind of a look. So that's kind of what we do with sculpture today. But there's many, many uses. So I want you to play around with this and just have fun. Uh, the fun thing about sculpting is that you can start with something and not really know where it's going to go, but you'll you'll kind of see it emerge. So here I have this kind of a rough shape. You know, I might actually want to add to this a little bit on the back with some more clay until it gets a little bit more rounded back there so I don't have to make that big, like, bulky with clay, so... Because I don't want the clay to be too thick anywhere. It makes it harder to bake. It wants to crack if it's too thick and unevenly thick. So try to get the armature pr roughly the shape of the head, okay? Not, not worrying about the nose or anything like that, but just kind of the skull shape. All right, so then when you're ready, when you're done with that, you will take this smoothed piece and um, just wrap it over and you'll 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 have to just tear off parts 
you'll be adding to this, but it's kind of nice to start out with a smooth, even layer, because then you know what you're working with. I already am having some cracking going on. That's okay. Um, so then on the sides, I'll just tear off the extra. This is an amazingly malleable clay, and it doesn't dry out ever until you bake it or, or harden. And actually, once you've got it soft, it'll probably stay pretty soft for the duration of the project. So when you come back to it, it's not going to be as rough as it was at first. So any cracks I can easily smooth over. Now I see I see I have this jaw here. I want to keep the form of the jaw. I'm pressing it together. And you can start to see sort of a, a human shaped, very, very rough head shape. So that's part one. I know we haven't gotten very far, but this will take us probably a couple, of, at least one period, maybe two, just to get to this point. So we will resume in part two with the rest of the head.